It really is a, a very sp a special a pleasure for me to, to be hosting uh, Kurt Newman. Uh, I've, I've known Kurt for, um, for more than two decades since I, I, I first got involved with, with Children's uh, National Med Medical Center uh, the way many parents do. Uh, that is uh, when one of our kids needs help. Uh, Kurt was a, a full-time practicing surgeon then, uh, one who clearly enjoyed his work. Uh, you could tell he was interested not just uh, in what he did in the operating room, uh, but in the bigger picture of medical research and the advancement of care. Uh, he also was clearly a people person who connected uh, very easily uh, with kids and their parents. Uh, I watched also as he went on to become a chief of surgery and with the help of a $150 million gift from UAE, uh, oversaw development of the Sh uh, Sheikh Zayed Institute for Pediatric Surgical Innovation at Children's, uh, which is focused on making surgery for children minimally, minimally invasive and pain-free. Uh, now, a chief of surgery uh, was the top uh, job that uh, Kurt had uh, up until then ever aspired to. Um, but he was destined to, to go higher. Uh, and indeed, having shown vision and, and great administ administrative skills, he was tapped six years ago to become a CEO of Children's, the first physician to run the hospital. Under his leadership, Children's has risen in the ranks of the nation's best medical centers uh, that care for kids. Uh, now, anyone who, who gets involved with, uh, with Children's hears story after story of kids receiving a truly phenomenal treatment, their health re restored and their futures given new promise. In Healing Children, uh, Kurt shares a number of personal stories and, and case histories. Uh, he also offers at the end a, a short but very useful section, uh, practical advice for, for parents about how to, how to get the best care for their children. But there's a larger message in this book. And that is that pediatric medicine, for all its advances, remains undervalued and under-resourced compared to the attention given to adult uh, diseases in this country. Uh, you know, when Kurt joined Children's as a surgical fellow in 1984, he worked for Judson Randolph, uh, who was then the first full-time pediatric surgeon in the nation's capital. That was just a little more than 30 years ago. Uh, the world of pediatric medicine has come a long way since then, uh, but many of us in the, in the D.C. area might not realize how fortunate we are to have a separate hospital uh, devoted to kids. There are only uh, about uh, three dozen other such uh, independent children's hospitals uh, in the United States. Uh, there may be a, a, a couple hundred or so uh, other facilities that operate as part of larger integrated health systems. Uh, but that compares to nearly 5,000 hospitals focused primarily on adult health care. Kurt makes a persuasive case in his book that pediatric specialty care and research should be a national priority because, I mean, j just think of it for a minute. If we can get care for kids right, it will make caring for the health of adults so much uh, easier and more cost effective. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in, in welcoming Kurt Newman. Well, uh, it's hard to know what to say after the, the owner and proprietor of the, uh, this iconic, uh, institution here in Washington, D.C. introduces you. Uh, when you think about politics and prose, uh, you know, and C-SPAN uh, and Children's National, I feel like I've made it. Uh, <laughs> and and, and I'm, I'm looking out at all of you and seeing so many, so many friends and colleagues and patient families. Uh, it's just a, a real special moment uh, for me to see all of you there. I did want to say a little bit more about Bradley and, and Lissa. Uh, they've been longtime friends of mine, but uh, I think in some ways, more importantly, longtime friends of Children's National. Uh, they uh, uh, support us in every which way, our orthopedics. Uh, and I know this isn't supposed to be about Children's National, it's about my book, but you know, 
when you're the CEO, you got to use every chance you get to tell the story about, about children's. Uh, but they've been huge supporters of our orthopedic department. And, and probably in two ways. Um, uh, one, with their own philanthropy, but uh, I don't think the business of our orthopedic department has ever been as good as when your three kids were playing soccer. I mean, <laughs> and, and, and uh, they learned anatomy the hard way. Yeah, they, uh, they did, but they were all uh, terrific athletes. And I know because I coached one of them, uh, and he, uh, he's gone on to, to Yale and, and is playing, uh, playing there. So, Bradley, it's just a, a real honor to, to be here, and I wanted to thank you and, and all the staff. The staff at, uh, here has just been terrific in hosting what is uh, – this is the official launch. This is it. Uh, you're here. It's historic. Uh, uh, don't you feel it? I mean, I, I'm feeling it um, because this is uh, an institution, and it it's, uh, hasn't been around as long as Children's. Children's has been – uh, part of Washington, D.C. for over 100, almost 150 years. And uh, it's uh, just wonderful to be in this room and see so many faces of people who have helped make uh, children's what it is, and therefore this book uh, uh, possible. It, uh, now, I could use up my entire time thanking people around the room, and there are so many people I could thank. Uh, but I don't want to use up all my time doing that, so I'll try and do that individually. Because uh, as I look around, just I've got a great story with, about, well, some of you, I've got lots of great stories. My best friend from high school is here. So. Uh, but, uh, you know, lots of great stories, and we could go all night, but we're not going to do that. Uh, but I'm grateful for all of your so support. There is one person I do uh, want to uh, call out tonight, and that is my wife, Allison Newman. Allison's here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has uh, been about the most supportive partner anybody could ask for throughout this process. Uh, she even let me um, and agreed that I could tell the story of how we met, and it's in the book. Uh, this is a little bit of a joke. There's a spoiler alert here. But I did get the girl. But if you read the story, you'll realize it was a long shot at that point. <laughs> but she's been, um, um, you know, she's been with me every step of the way uh, as I wrote this book, first of all saying, are you kidding? <laughs> but uh, we've, we've uh, morphed that all the way to now. You know, it's, it's better than I thought it would be. So uh, we're, we're making a uh, uh, progress. So Allison, th thank you. Thank you for your support. Um, you know, I, I was trying to think about a lot of ways I could uh, talk about the book uh, with you all and, and why I wrote the book. And I, uh, I brought a little prop that sort of helps keep focus because you think about adult medicine and Bradley talked about all the different uh, the difference in uh, adult hospitals, children's hospitals. But I just want to get you focused on, on something, and I think this prop might help. And that is this, this is a little, um, it's a 3D um, um, <coughs> printed, a 3D printer printed this replica of a baby's heart. So you think about a human heart, and, uh, and I tell a story in the book about a girl, and I was with her today on, uh, on, on television, if anybody was watching uh, uh, Channel 7 this morning, uh, Tanisha uh, Starnes was with me. And uh, she was shot in the heart. Now, when she came in, um, I uh, operated on her right there in the emergency department because her heart had stopped. Her heart was about this big, big around. I had it in my hands. But this is a baby's heart. And this is what our heart surgeons operate on. Um, and I think it's, you know, maybe a, the size of a large walnut, but this is what heart surgeons in children do every day. And, you know, it makes the point, and it gets uh, uh, your head as I start talking about why I wrote the book around how different, um, you know, a baby and a 
uh, a baby's heart is and how different babies and children are from adults. And most people don't think about that. They don't think about their children that way, and it's, it's kind of weird because, you know, we think about our children differently. But for medicine, people sort of think it's, you know, just all maybe one thing. Uh, and one size fits all. And that, I, in my career as a surgeon, I would get these stories, or I have these stories, and many of you were on the other end of the phone call, and you'd say, well, you know, I'm here, I'm in this emergency department, they don't have a specialist, or I'm, uh, my child has a concussion, I took them to somewhere, and, you know, they really have not seen too many children. Or we're here, you know, about to have surgery, and they tell me the anesthesiologist, you know, is, does a couple of cases a month. And I finally just got tired of that. And I got a little bit angry. And that's really what motivated me to write the book, to empower parents and to take the, what I'd learned over 30 years of, of practice getting those kinds of phone calls, uh, working with uh, pediatricians who were just as frustrated, <clears throat> to, uh, to get that message out. And, and so the, uh, the reason I wrote the book was to try and provide, through stories and stories of, of children, because I wanted to bring people into the world of pediatric medicine and children's hospitals. But through these stories, engage parents on the things they could do and how they could be advocates for their children's health. And to understand the difference in a children's hospital and say a hospital that takes care of mostly adults but also does children. So at a place like Children's National, it's, that's all anybody does there. And we almost take it for granted. But so there's this whole world of, of pediatric medicine specialists, pediatricians uh, that's there. And Washington, and, and thank you for saying that, Bradley, is in a way blessed to have a, a hospital that's completely focused on children. And that's all uh, anybody does there. Because uh, if I bring it back uh, to this, um, children you know, are, are not just different because they're smaller, but the whole biology is different. They're so resilient. Uh, I tell a story, well, I'll go back to the story I, I started with. So Tanisha Starnes, 14 years old, she's standing uh, outside her uh, junior high school uh, down in, um, actually it's a nice part of Washington now, at the time it, it wasn't, and she was uh, a bystander uh, she happened to be the double Dutch jump rope champion of Washington, D.C. at 14. And she was uh, shot in the, in the chest and immediately collapsed. The emergency uh, uh, team got there, and they knew uh, what to do and to take her to, to Children's. Uh, and her heart stopped on the way to the hospital. So we, um, we had been, uh, I happened to be in the emergency department on call that day. Uh, we knew what to do. We trained, we were ready, we had all the equipment. That is not a given. That is just not a given. So we uh, knew what to do. I operated on her right there in the emergency department because her heart had stopped. Uh, got her heart going. Again, it was bigger than this. There was a tiny little hole, a gunshot hole in her heart. As her heart came back to life and started beating again, the blood started spurting out of that hole. And I, mean, I know it sounds very dramatic, but I put my finger over the hole. And that saved her life. Allison's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but, and it was that, you know, it was the um, most incredible thing. We didn't know whether she would, uh, uh, be able to get off first the operating room table, whether she'd uh, make it through the first day or two of life. Well, she, uh, two days later, she woke up and smiled with the breathing tube still in. And that's what kids are all about. 
they're resilient. They have this kind of nat almost innate ability. And there's story after story uh, in the book about how these kids, uh, their biology and their resilience uh, come back. And the great thing about pediatric medicine uh, is, uh, and, and pediatric doctors and children's hospitals is, they, is that we know that and we take that into account. It's like part of the deal. You want to, you know how uh, a child is going to, you think through how a child is going to develop. So a concussion, for example, in a, an 8-year-old is very different than a 12-year-old or a 16-year-old or a 20-year-old. And so you want to spend, this is your child's brain. So you want somebody that understands that. You don't want just the most convenient place where it's easy to go and you can get in and out or maybe it's less costly. Why would we, I mean, and we make, I see people making those compromises all the time. And that's when I get angry. I mean, what, people spend much more time on where their kid's going to go to school, what soccer team, okay, I'm going to get a little tough here, what soccer team their kid would play for. I see some other soccer parents out here. I mean, we drive 200 miles to, for a, uh, a game, but people won't drive five miles to go to the emergency department of one of the best ch children's hospitals in the country. I mean, think about that. So that's the kind of thing that I, uh, uh, you know, motivated me is that I want people to understand that. And then I want them to, the parents to, uh, because it's easy to say, well, you should do that. But if, if you don't give people the tools, then, you know, and it's also amazing that our, that we don't make it easy for parents to figure this out. Like people aren't kind of helping, you know, well, you, or saying, well, you sh really should go to a neonatal intensive care nursery uh, because that really has all the specialists and has everything that's needed in, for a baby that looks like it's going to be complicated ahead of time. There's a there's this competition and this you know all of these hurdles that are put in place that make it hard for parents to figure that out. So what I tried to do with the book is to uh, give uh, parents uh, some of the tools, but also the philosophy of, you know, it's okay to advocate, and it's okay to ask hard questions, and it's okay to, to uh, uh, switch and find the, the right, right thing, and to really, uh, uh, you know, it's easy to be, and I think we all do this, be very deferential to, to physicians and, and hospitals. But more and more, what I've seen is that to be successful, uh, you have to be an advocate and you have to take on that, that role for your, for your children. And when you do, uh, the, you know, the results are going to be better because at a, a place w with a, uh, if we take specialists, for example, uh, and you look at, at the results of uh, different treatments where, uh, and we'll take orthopedics, for example, you want an orthopedic surgeon that really knows about the growth of the bones. So in children, you have to know about growth plates and you have to know what happens in the joints and you have to be able to interpret MRIs and x-rays in the face of what happens uh, with that growth in mind. And, you know, we were fortunate because our sons got the best orthopedic uh, care in, in the country. But it wasn't easy, and there were some serious injuries along the way. And if they, the, the, the key is if there, things aren't taken care of properly and done right, up front, you miss so much uh, opportunity. And that's the, uh, another principle of dealing with children, is that there's so much that we can do early. And if you look at a lot of the things that uh, we have in our country now, uh, and a lot of the issues that uh, uh, ch children are facing, whether it's mental health, or whether it's heart disease, obesity, diabetes, these are things that we're on the cusp of being able to solve early. 
And if we make these types of diagnoses early, we can really prevent a lot of the, the things that uh, uh, can happen later in, a, in adult diseases. And that's just one of the, uh, I think, real exciting uh, things that, that's out there. So this whole area of fetal medicine and diagnosis, or what we call now prenatal pediatrics, where diagnoses are made ahead of time. And I, I tell a story in the book, and it's a family uh, uh, that, that I've gotten to know uh, very well about mothers. And the biggest mistakes I ever made as a, as a surgeon uh, were uh, uh, when, often when I didn't listen to the mother. And that was true in my own home. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I was the great minimizer. So here I am pontificating. I was the great minimizer in our home. Oh, he's all right, he, you know. Uh, the fact he can barely breathe and turn him blue, you know, just give him something. And the pediatrician says, if your wife wasn't an ICU nurse, he'd be down in the ICU right now kind of thing. But, uh, you know, there, but there's so much that uh, uh, we can learn uh, uh, now from the, uh, uh, in, in the story. I tell the story about a mother and, and grandmother who, who came to see me where they'd been given some advice about terminating a, a, a baby based on a, uh, an ultrasound. And that was by the obstetrician. And to, to really go through the story real quick, uh, what they were told when they came to see me for a second opinion was not really the, uh, you know, was not, uh, termination was not really necessary that this was something that could probably uh, be taken care of after the baby was born and everything uh, and would need surgery. Uh, and so we made that, uh, uh, so I, made, I had a great radiologist uh, who all she does is look at baby x-rays all day long. Why would you want a radiologist that, that that's only part of their job? That's all she did and she said, you know, this definitively, this baby is going to be fine. So uh, that turned out to be uh, true. And the obstetrician was very, very unhappy with me and called me and said I'd done a real disservice. But to be uh, fair, uh, after the baby was born, uh, she called me to say how wrong she'd been. And she really appreciated what we'd done. And the baby is, I mean, now she's a, a young girl. She's doing, doing great. And uh, I asked the, uh, so it was not just a mother's intuition on this story, it was a grandmother's intuition as well, because they were together. I said, well, what was it? Why did, you, uh, why did you come to me? Why did you come for a second opinion? And she said, well, Dr. Newman, we just had a feeling that we didn't want just a second opinion, but we wanted an expert opinion. And so that's the theme that uh, goes through the book is that uh, the idea is to uh, that this whole world of pediatric medicine, children's hospitals, children's specialists, is, is, it's a different world and it's what we all deserve and, and want for our children. We're fortunate to have that type of resource here in Washington, but that's not true across the country and we need, you know, that we need to do more. And I'm also uh, concerned, I don't get into it as deep in the book, but I think it's important to uh, say right now is that, you know, we're at a real crossroads in our country. So we're talking about the conversations I hear are about cutting things like Medicaid and, you know, cutting the NIH and uh, doing all these things when we're on the cusp of such terrific discoveries. And, and when you think about half of the half of the people on, that are on Medicaid, half of the beneficiaries are children. So who's going to get hurt? Why do we want to do that? We're not doing that to the elderly on Medicare. Why, do, why would we want to do that? In fact, we ought to double down and really put more into our children uh, because it's really cost effective. It's smart medicine. It's wise because we can prevent a lot of these uh, diseases. So I'm getting real serious here. Uh, the, the book uh, also tells some funny stories on myself. It wasn't, um, I wasn't 
always destined to be a, a, a surgeon, a pediatric surgeon. I had my own health situation when I was in medical school, and that really turned the tide. And I met some amazing mentors over the years that you'll hear about. Judd Randolph was mentioned. He was an icon here in Washington, D.C. Uh, he took care of so many uh, children and families and really built one of the top departments of surgery in, in the country. That's what brought me down here. I talk about some great pediatricians, uh, uh, Dr. Ong, Dr. Stroud, many people h here in the audience know, and Dr. Van Vleck is still in her practice, is still practicing in that practice. Great pediatricians here in, in Washington. Talk about Joe Robert, another uh, uh, just incredible uh, visionary, helped me think through uh, uh, what, how we could make Children's National and the world uh, a leading uh, hospital uh, for children in the, uh, in the world uh, through our, our Department of Surgery and now all the great things. And then a lot of the doctors uh, and, and nurses at Children's that are the real heroes. I see one, I just catching out of the corner of my eye, Dr. Jerry Joya is here. He's probably the world's expert, world expert in childhood concussion. Uh, and, uh, and, and he's in the book. In fact, it was so, the, one of the hardest parts about writing this book <laughs> was uh, not uh, knowing not, what not to put in, trying to figure that out, because there were so many uh, people and so many stories and, and all of that. Uh, my editor's here, Joy DeMonil in the green there. She's the one that really said, you can't do that. <laughs> But she took uh, this uh, mass of stories and uh, helped me craft it into to a book. And um, you know, I uh, I hope you uh, uh, enjoy it uh, and find a way to spread the word. Uh, I hope you feel empowered uh, to as you spread the word about the value, the special and priceless value of, of children's medicine about what it can offer, uh, what it can offer parents, uh, but al also what it can offer our country. Uh, I think it's something we can all rally around. And, uh, you know, so it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. People talk to say, well, you know, how long did it take? And, um, you know, my answer is, I mean, the, the technical answer is it took about four years. And it started with, a, I was in a book club, if you can believe that. And we would sit around, sit around and tell stories. And my friend said, you know, these are, you, gotta, you need to be telling these stories to be on uh, here in the book. We told stories because we never wrote, read the books. You know? <laughs> so I, I know what goes on in book clubs. Uh, but uh, so don't make that, don't make this book one of those books that nobody <laughs> reads. And I see a lot of my friends from uh, high school and of days at, at BCC, and I keep joking about how there's going to be a, a stack of, uh, at the book sale, there'll be a st 20 books uh, uh, being sold. That's, that's why I'm autographing them all with their names on them, so I, I, I know who's returning these books for, for, for 10 cents, and I know who you guys are. Uh, 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 but the, the real thing was, um, you know, it, 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 it's really been 30 years that I've been thinking about, in a way, writing this book because it's been the experience I've had uh, first as a surgeon for, for 25 years, and then, well, actually, uh, eight, uh, actually, ten, 12 years, 10 years before that in training and, and education, and then the last five years as, as the CEO of, of Children's. So uh, it's, uh, but it's been worth it. And I've already, uh, and I'll tell you why it's really been worth it, is because uh, the kids that have come back to me and some of the families that I've reconnected with, uh, the, their stories are so amazing. They're the real heroes of the book. That's what drives uh, the book. I was just uh, this week with um, uh, a young man, actually the baby that uh, when I, I'll give a little bit of the story away where I tried to uh, 
Allison and I were out on a date, one of our first dates. I thought I'd impress her, but I got called in. Hey, you want to come down and see me offer, you know, kind of <laughs> cool, you know. I thought it was going to be a slick, quick, quick, easy operation. She'd be really impressed. Uh, it was okay. The nurse just said it was okay. So, uh, so she came there to, to observe, and this baby had one of the most complicated things I've ever seen. It was so complicated, I even called my boss, Dr. Randolph, to tell him, you know, ask him for his advice. And he said, well, Kurt, I guess you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't counting on that answer. But I had some good colleagues that I had called in, and uh, being why I forgot about Allison, and I was just, you know, trying to, to uh, concentrate and figure this thing out. If there had been a book or the internet, I would have gone on it at that point. But we sorted things out and did something that at that time that saved his life. Uh, you'll read about it in the book, but Allison, uh, that the, the end of that evening did not go well. Uh, she was not impressed. And uh, she also uh, uh, educated me about how I needed to pay more attention to the baby's needs. And uh, he needed to be cuddled. He needed to be warm. He needed somebody there that, uh, so that he knew that something was, uh, that there was somebody looking out for him because his mother was not there. And uh, that that babies, you know, know that stuff and nobody was paying attention to that. Uh, so, but fast forward, I was just, uh, he just came back to Children's uh, uh, a couple of nights ago for a, a little event I was having for uh, some of the uh, doctors and uh, a couple of the patients in the book. And we stood there, I had been at his wedding. This is after 22 operations. I don't know how many hospitalizations. And he was somebody we never thought would get married. And then uh, he now, has a seven-month-old son, and he is the just the most healthy, uh, most amazing uh, uh, baby. And of course, Tyler, who in some ways is the real one of the real heroes of the book, says, "But he, he's he's got perfect genes. We've had him checked out top to bottom. But if he ever breaks his arm, I'm bringing him to Children's National." <laughs> So anyway, the book is uh, Healing Children. Um, I'll be um, signing some books, and I'm happy to take some questions now. Thank you. Dr. Newman, thank you very much for your words. Um, um, I am a local college student. Um, I'm on the autism spectrum and, um, and regularly advocate for inclusion in a variety of contexts. After completing my education, I'm seriously considering working in a profession in which it will be possible to positive, in which it will be, be possible to help individuals who have special needs and particularly children to achieve their dreams. Um, um, my question is, um, my question is, um, what do you think is particularly important for people such as, for individuals such as myself who are considering working in that area to know and understand? Well, uh, first of all, congratulations. Uh, you know, it sounds like you've, uh, have a great career ahead of you and are, uh, doing, just such wonderful things uh, in school, and uh, I'd like to talk to you more about what your ideas and, uh, and plans are. I think what I've uh, learned is that, uh, and there's a, um, uh, there's a little story in the book uh, 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 that Dr. Randolph used to say uh, something like, you, you can never tell by looking at them how far a frog can jump. So excuse my southern dialect attempt there. And by that I mean, uh, I think we tend to categorize uh, uh, people and diagnoses and things way too quickly. And we really need to think about the individual and the, 
special uh, potential of every individual. And uh, so I would say there's, there's many ways, uh, things I want to say about your, your question. Uh, first of all, research. Uh, I think there's so much opportunity to find out what causes uh, something like autism. And maybe autism isn't one thing. It's like you're, you've got one thing, and we call, I don't know your name, but. Uh, I'm Nathan. So it, this is Nathan's problem, and then there's George's problem. And I think we make a mistake by lumping it all together. It makes it hard to figure out what's really going on. And then we tailor treatments and uh, approaches individually uh, to uh, people's situation and, and try and look at their potential and not what, uh, where they are right now. So that's what I would say. I'd, I'd say we have a lot of work to do in that, that area. But people like you are champions uh, for that, and you're, the, you're examples for all of us about uh, what, what can happen, what people can achieve. So thank you for that. I'm not an audience plant, and um, I'm here. You really answered my question already because I was going to ask you about personalized and individualized medicine. But I do want to um, give you all a shout out. And one of the things, and this is where my the nexus of my question is, um, as as a person who works in health policy, but as a as a parent at Children's. Um, how do you um, fill your pipeline? And, let me, and we're into evidence-based medicine, we're into the, you know, um, CBM, all that stuff. So how do you figure out that sort of click, how the doctor, and I'll give you a couple, an example personally. I just remember when my son was going into surgery, the surgeon said, you gotta have a little faith. And we did, and it was wonderful. I remember when we were going into anesthesia, you're talking about personalized medicine, that um, he was all wrapped up in his little blanket, banky, and we took the blanket off, and the doctor said, no, 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 he's going into surgery with banky. And banky's in our safe at home while my child is at college. Um, so how do you figure out all my encounters are, we're so based in science and evidence Yet there's this faith and this ability to personalize. And you're not just working with adults, you're working with moms and dads, kids. How do you do that? Well, um, the, I think the, um, um, I, I've learned a lot, and I, I don't know, I, I'm not the expert, but I've learned a lot uh, from being in the, the role, particularly uh, now as, as the CEO of a hospital about I think a lot of it's about listening. Mm -hmm. So um, I have parents, and they're all through the room, uh, that come with great ideas, or sometimes they come with, uh, uh, they're not so much ideas, but they're, um, I don't want to call them, they're observations. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're patients about how we can do things better. And we do tend to sometimes, in medicine and science, focus on the, <laughs> the medicine and the science. But what we're learning uh, about uh, is that more and more the experience, and that's why the title of the, my book is, is about healing children. I thought a lot about uh, curing children. I was sort of leaning toward, you know, the science and the, the real, but it really is about healing uh, children, and, and it is a balance. And so when you, I think one of the great things about a, a children's hospital, and I try and um, uh, talk about, is the, uh, that whole dimension of art, mm -hmm. music, uh, schoolwork, friends, family, that is critical and crucial. And I think the science is beginning to catch up because the studies are starting to show that when you have that, uh, people heal, and particularly children, heal more. So if you come to Children's National, we've got some great friends and allies here that I'd uh, love to shout out to. But uh, it's a, people say, well, how can you work there? Because it must be, if they haven't been there, because it must be really sad, it must be depressing. Um, and, you know, in fact, uh, the 
most of the publishers except mine uh, thought that our the book was too depressing, too discouraging. It was going to be a lot about uh, baby children that were sick or whatever, uh, and so, some children that didn't make it. But really, when you're there, the children don't have that perspective, and it's actually it takes on the the uh, the vibe of a happy place, and it's our job to support that and to you know reinforce that and to uh, it, it empower that healing. So uh, I think I I'm not sure I'm answering your question directly, but there is a story in the book where. Um, uh, I uh, was brought up short by a young man who, um, who said uh, at uh, one of our first town meetings after I'd become the CEO, he said, you know, uh, he stood up there. He said, you know, Dr. Newman, you're doing some great things for children here, but I'm a teenager and you don't have anything for teenagers. And we have our own music. We, uh, we need our own space. We don't want to be there with the kids and the little teddy bears, you know, that's... Uh, we have our own video games, and you need a hospital that, that respects that. And, uh, and so we, uh, with some great partners, have moved along, along that path. So, uh, but it, it is a balance, and I think we, uh, you don't want to lose sight of the, the science. Uh, that is just so promising, and many things that were uh, incurable at one point now are things we, we treat. Uh, and there's so many, you know, uh, different lethal uh, uh, diseases I talk about, and, and, and we also never quite know uh, what, uh, you know, what works sometimes. So I tell the story, in, uh, one of the stories in the book about a young man who was um, uh, from Washington but was down in South Carolina for his... Uh, uh, vacation, summer vacation with his family. He was playing basketball and got kneed in the in the uh, in the abdomen, and went into shock. And what had happened was the uh, the blow had uh, basically cracked a big liver tumor, and he started bleeding and went into shock. He got transported to the closest hospital. They resuscitated him. The family wanted him brought to Children's for his for his treatment because. If uh, by the statistics, and this is going back to the statistics, uh, he only had, even in best case scenario, a 10% chance of surviving this. And he, um, um, because it had spread and it was the worst kind of liver cancer. So he was in eighth grade at Gonzaga High School, and he was about, or he was about to go into, the, into high school at Gonzaga. It was the summer before that. And so, you know, and, uh, you know, the statistics were against him. We gave it our all with surgery, and it's one of the most defeated I've ever left in operating room because we knew we hadn't gotten it all. We'd gotten j just about everything, but that's not good enough when you're dealing with this kind of cancer. And I, you know, and I talked to his parents but, and told them that, but they were, um, you know, they, there was a certain uh, serenity, and they, but the, the boy never knew that. All he knew was he wanted to get better. We gave him the chemotherapy. We started everything. Within five months, I think, he, was, he had made the baseball team as a freshman at Gonzaga with a portacath in place. Uh, and then we thought we were going to have to do a liver transplant. To, uh, his liver had grown back. There was no evidence of any cancer in there. Two years later, uh, he sent me a picture. He's carrying the Olympic torch when the torch came through here on the way to the Atlanta Olympics, he's now, he graduated from college, he's now went through business school and has just got engaged to be married. So even with all the science, it's, you gotta stay, it's gotta stay individualized because you just don't know and these kids uh, will uh, surprise you every time. And that's why you, wanna, you want doctors in a hospital that have that mindset. One of the great pediatricians of all time. You are way too kind, but I'll take it. <laughs> so I was a plant, but it was such a great question, I'm going to ask it. Because <laughs> my patients are down in southern Maryland. They're way down at the bottom of the world, uh, and they do come up to Children's National. But the, the plant question that they gave me, which I think is such a great question, is 
what can parents do in advance, especially parents like mine that are down in Cobb Island or further, what can they do to sort of prepare themselves just in case there's an emergency, other than having my phone number and saying, Dr. Abney, you are sending me to Children's? Well, that's a good place to start, Dr. <laughs> Abney, because uh, I think every, uh, you know, I, I think it really is about preparation and education and uh, to know that there's uh, resources, but there's some practical uh, pointers, and I'll shamelessly uh, 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 pitch my book here, but one of the things I wanted to do was give you give parents some practical advice. So there's this there's this section uh, that Bradley mentioned called the eight ways to get the best medical care for your kids, and the basic theme is is preparation. So just like you've got a plan for uh, if there's a fire in your house, you know where the fire escapes are, you know who you're going to call, and all of that. You need that for your for your children. So you need to know and ahead of time I would figure out where you're going to take your child if there's an emergency. Now down where you are, I mean maybe it's the local hospital be for certain things, but maybe uh, for other things that can wait uh, and need, uh, you know, you want to, uh, you can make it to a pediatric emergency department. But don't wait until the, it happens to find out where that is or where you park or, or how you navigate into the system. Why not do a dry run? And so you know, because when you're in the middle of the crisis, it's not the time to be trying to figure all this stuff out. And that happens uh, way too often. Uh, most people don't know whether their insurance covers a children's hospital or not. And more and more in these days, uh, hospitals can be carved out of your health plan. So you, you want to know if that's the case. And then if it is, you probably want to switch health plans if they're not going to switch it, uh, if they're not going to uh, allow you to use a resource like a children's hospital. You're going to want to talk to your pediatrician because although you're, you know, very wise and experienced pediatrician and know and you have a set, I would predict, a set of who, what specialists you refer to. So I would want to know if you are referring me to a uh, have surgery that my child uh, is going to have an anesthesiologist that that's all they do why would I want to take a chance on going to a surgery center or somewhere where the surgery may be the least complicated part of what's happening for those ear tubes or whatever when it's the anesthesia uh, that can really uh, um, make, the, make the difference so these are questions you can ask ahead of time, and they're, you're in your right to ask those questions just like you would uh, when you're checking out a school or uh, uh, checking any, anything else out. I think uh, uh, one of the things that I um, advocate for is that uh, um, to be a mem uh, an active member of your team, of the child's team. So if you are in the hospital, don't the, more and more, the great hospitals encourage parent participation, whether it's on rounds, they like being challenged and asked the questions. Don't be, don't be afraid to do that. And there are usually resources within the hospital to help you with that. More and more, there's, navigate, there's navigators, um, a nurse, uh, and we have one. And in fact, uh, where's Nathan? Did he uh, uh, take off? Oh, there he is. So one of the, uh, one of the improvements I made was that uh, some of the kids that are uh, on the autism spectrum, a little younger uh, than you, uh, they didn't, uh, their parent, uh, one of the parents came to me and was very angry because a lot of the things we would do in the hospital, uh, and a lot of these kids need to come to the hospital for different things, actually made, would trigger off their, uh, uh, a lot of the things that made them nervous and anxious. We didn't kind of have that personalized approach. So back to you, to the, the question about personalized medicine too. Every person, there may be something that makes them feel more comfortable or more relaxed, and we wanted to have that. So there's resources out there and they're embedded in the hospital, but the problem is, and this is frustrating, and uh, is how to tap into that. It's not made as easy as it should be for people to, to know that. 
So I'm just, I'll, I'll stop there. I could keep going on and on. Uh, but I'd say the biggest thing is check these things out, push it before you need it. And then if you're in the special circumstance where you're thinking about having a, a, a baby and you're going down that, doing, going down that road, uh, and you're starting to talk about where is the baby going to be born or maybe there's going to be issues, have a plan ahead of time. Know if you need that, if, if there's a complication. Well, what level neonatal intensive care are you talking about where you're being delivered? And if that's not going to be enough, where are you going to go? Or where are you going to be sent? And why is that the best place? And have that whole, because you may want to switch. And the time to have that discussion is while you're healthy, uh, while you're uh, not um, in the crisis situation of having, uh, uh, you know, delivered the baby, and now I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll use the word, can I swear here? <laughs> you know, all hell is breaking loose. You know, I mean, that's just not the time to be worrying about specialists and, and, and all of that. You want that seamlessly set up ahead of time and so many things now are sorted out ahead of time you want the best advice uh, for that situation thank you hello um you describe very convincingly the importance of teamwork and how that contributes uh, to the outcomes. And most of the descriptions, understandably, from a sur pediatric surgeon are from a surgical perspective. But I also know that um, Children's is very well regarded for chronic care issues for children with diabetes and asthma. How is that replicated um, for kids with chronic uh, conditions? Well, thank you, uh, my good friend, Ann Mahoney. <laughs> the public health nurse. Public health nurse, right. Uh, and uh, if I didn't um, credit the, the team, um, then I, you know, I'd, I'd be remiss because it is a team sport. Mm -hmm. And to get the best outcomes requires the, the team. And I, I do talk a lot in the book about um, uh, nursing, and our chief operating officer, for example, was a nurse. And that was, that's one of the stories about how important it is. And it, I thought it symbolized things to have a, a CEO as a physician and a chief operating officer as a nurse. That, that was kind of the, the uh, it would send the message. Plus, she's terrific. I mean, she's uh, the real deal. Uh, that, uh, but it is about the team, and it's about child life. It's about all of those supports to help uh, uh, children with chronic disease. and because uh, one of the great perspectives, though, is that a lot of these chronic diseases, we can really make it have an impact on early. And whether it's early diagnosis and there's treatments now, I talk a lot uh, about uh, in the book about a couple of situations with cystic fibrosis that we would never ever see now because mm -hmm. the treatments are, are so good. Uh, diabetes, uh, we're making big advances. Uh, but you need that perspective of uh, children, development, uh, compliance in kids mm -hmm. is so different mm -hmm. than, uh, uh, than adults, uh, whether they're going to take their medicine, whether they're going to stick to a diet, whether they not feel different, all the whole psychology of it. And if you don't have that team in place, uh, then the, the care and the outcomes are, are not, not going to be there. So it really is that holistic uh, approach and and then probably central to that team uh, is a great mother and probably a father it's father's day I'll throw a father in there too. <laughs> but but a great uh, parents and, and family siblings we forget about siblings mm -hmm. but this is what uh, this is the kind of a, approach you need to really uh, get the best outcomes so thank you thank thank you I, I, I did want to add that uh, 
in, in case you're thinking I'm going to be a, a millionaire and retire, <laughs> uh, all the proceeds go to the uh, 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 charity that supports uh, research in children, most of which will go to uh, Ch uh, Children's National, but also other, other uh, worthy institutions. So uh, thank you all for uh, being here and your support, and spread the word.